all whites. So what would it be like to power with some batteries? The light bulbs, fantastic. So those light bulbs, well, what do you think would happen to those light bulbs if I gave them too large of a, no, let me rephrase that. What do I get if I give them too small of a potential difference? What? They might not even light up. Now this battery might actually, this battery will be fairly bright with one and a half volts. Well, not really. Like this would not, this is a flashlight that we wouldn't buy. Right? Um, and what do you think would happen if we gave it too many batteries? It would burn out, so let's see that. Now, three volts is actually pretty good for this light bulb, so it's probably going to be pretty bright when I, when I need two batteries, right? In fact, that's probably optimal. Uh, this light bulb is probably designed to offer, operate off of three volts. And then if I give it four and a half volts, I mean, you saw how bright it was with three. Pretty, pretty confident that it's going to burn out at four and a half volts. So what do you expect to see when I make this last connection? Well, really bright for probably less than a second and then nothing, right? And that's exactly what happened. It's still connected, all right? So that was too much, too large of a potential difference. This light bulb was too powerful. It created too much thermal energy and the filament light destroyed itself. Now, this particular light bulb was pretty good at 3 volts, but maybe some other light bulb um, need, needs something more than that. Maybe we want to create a better flashlight that is brighter than, than the one we saw at 4 volts. And maybe some of those, so let's draw a circuit for that. So here's our batteries. Uh, the symbol for a light bulb, I don't know that you need to draw this. Uh, the symbol for a light bulb is like a circle with like a squiggly in it to represent the filament. And maybe we want, you know, three volts isn't quite enough, four and a half volts is probably too much. Maybe we want like 4.1 volts to be used up across this light bulb, right? 4.1 joules of energy per coulomb of charge uh, is used up as we go through that filament. That will be our optimal brightness and we'll have a better flashlight than any of the other ones on the market. How are we gonna get 4.1 volts? We get 4.1. We can't do it with, with AA batteries. We can't do it with D batteries. How are we going to do it? Brian. It's a fit. Yeah, so, so, so Brian did the reading, right? We, we're going to use 4.5 volts worth of batteries, but we're going to put some extra resistance into the circuit. Right? We're going to put some extra resistance in there just to have a 0 0.4 volt drop across it so that our, our, light, our light bulb is not getting all four and a half volts. Okay, and that would be very easy to do. It would be very easy to calculate what resistor we have to build in there. And that is what we mean by a voltage divider. All right, so just to kind of catch up here, almost all of the batteries that we can go to the drugstore and buy are 1.5 volt batteries. Um, but most electrical devices, it's not just our light bulb, you know, maybe it is, what else is it? Maybe it's, uh, so I have five different circuit boards here. Um, this one is from a, now this one was actually from something that we plug into the wall, it's from a soda machine. This one is from uh, a calculator, you can still see the little Solar, solar panel on it. Uh, this one is from a refrigerator. This one is from batting cages. And then this one is um, like from a computer. Like the, uh, I guess this would be from an old school disk drive that had the little square disks. Uh, this is from a uh, computer. So I mean, all of the things I handed out have multiple parts that are supposed to like operate off of a potential difference, but I really don't think that they're, they're needing multiples of 1.5 volts or a full 120 volts for the ones that plug in, right? They need something less than that, so we will build resistors into them. So all those little things you see that look like resistors that have like bands on them, those are resistors. And I would be pretty 
confident, I would bet money, that each of the resistors you see is acting as a voltage divider to just prevent the full potential difference of the outlet or the batteries from reaching um, one or more devices that are on that circuit. All right, so I, I said yesterday that most of the circuits we see are parallel circuits, but there's like one exception. This is the exception, right? A voltage divider is really uh, the most common place where we see a series circuit. Okay, other questions from you guys about building some extra resistance into a circuit just to have a voltage drop and prevent the full battery potential difference from being used up across our thing. Okay, fantastic. Um, so we already said everything here, a voltage divider is a resistor that's built into a circuit to heat up some of the potential difference of the battery that will prevent the full battery potential difference from being applied to the rest of the circuit. Alright, I'm not going to record the review part of the class because I just don't think I have a lot of battery left.